Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run and install the game Quake 1 on the N1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm going to be referring to this website called MacSourcePorts.com, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And this is a list of all the open source game recreation engines that are on the internet that have been built for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this has been specifically built using VK Quake, which is the original source port, but has been built for native ARM Apple Silicon Macs. So this is going to be able to take advantage of all of the hardware and software of the native ARM chips. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to the MacSourcePorts.com website, then we're going to go down to here and click the download button. So this is a specifically a notarized build for Apple Silicon Macs. I'm just going to click on this button here and press keep. Then we're going to go to our downloads folder and then double click on the zip file to expand it. And now we have this application here. If I check the details of this, this is a universal binary, which means that it'll work on Intel Macs as well as Apple Silicon Macs as well, such as the M1 chip. So the next thing we need to do is to find the original game files. So we need the id1 folder from the original Quake installation. So there are many legitimate places to buy Quake from. We can go and get this from GOG.com. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is going to contain a Windows port of the game. However, it's going to have the id1 file that we need. So here, for example, I'm going to go to games and then in my library, I'm going to go down to Quake and then we're going to download the offline installer. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to my previous video tutorial about how to extract these installer files so that we can get the files that we need for this source port. If you don't have a GOG copy of the game, you can always go to someone like archive.org or if you have it on Steam or any other time digital platform or even the original ISO files, then you can just find the id1 folder and we'll just copy it into the correct place. So I've got my setup folder here. I'm just going to use my method for extracting it. I've just opened up terminal. I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. So here we're going to init extract this setup folder. I'm going to press return. And now this has started the extraction process. So once that's extracted, we're just going to close down terminal and then we're going to go to the app folder here. And basically we're going to find this id1 folder. Once we've located id1, I'm going to put it into my downloads folder. As long as this id1 folder is sibling to the VK Quake folder, then the VK Quake will discover it when we open it up. So here we're going to double click on VK Quake, press open here. So I'm having some trouble running this at the moment. I'm double clicking on it and it's not opening. What you can do is to control click and then click show package contents. And we're just going to drill down into the macOS folder here. And here we can just go ahead and run VK Quake directly from the macOS subfolder. And then this is going to load correctly. So we can see here that VK Quake is running as a native ARM build. And this is going to take advantage of the M1 Apple Silicon Max hardware and software. So here I've set the options to 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to full screen this first and then click apply changes. And now we have the changes set up. I'm also going to rebind the keys because it doesn't have WASD keys set up. So here I've set the max FPS to 1000 and I've also turned on the frame rate counter by using the command SCR underscore show FPS one. So now in the bottom right hand side of the screen, we can see that we're getting around 210 FPS. And I'm just going to play a little bit of the game just to show you how it works. So this is just all the kind of classic Quake gameplay. So this is all working great so far. I actually think that this works very well. It's actually better than running Quake Remastered, for example, as you're going to get much better performance running it as a native ARM port rather than trying to run it through crossover. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos about Mac source ports on my channel. Please check it out. If you find the video useful, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.